was raining that night as a will of his wallaby walked slowly down nunnery lane. It was a light rain, a gentle rain, but just enough to send a chill down the sky. Willibus Wallaby walked along, listening to the sounds of the night. He heard an owl, a frog, a shark. And from far, far away, the sound of a lonely violin menace practicing scales. Ahem! A lonely violinist. But suddenly, it started to rain harder. Yes, it was a very heavy rain now. Wilbur Swallowy quickened his pace, and as the wind started to blow in great gusts, he began to look frantically around for a place, any place to seek shelter. Suddenly, he saw a house with a large porch and a light on its side. He climbed the steps up to the porch. Finally, shelter from the rain. But not from the wind! That wind, that cool, harsh wind, it seemed to rip away at his clothing as if it had chosen him, Wilbur's Wallaby, as its victim. Wilbur's Wallaby's heart started to beat faster. He knocked on the door. Slowly, slowly, the door opened. there. Who wait, someone was there. Willibus Wallaby looked down, and there, standing before him, was a single, solitary, ghostly white kitty. The kitty approached him. It rubbed itself against his leg and purred loudly, as if to say, Dare to enter this house and you shall never leave alive! But for some reason, Willibus Wallaby found himself being drawn into that house, as if controlled by a force greater than he. Willibus Wallaby entered the house. He found himself being drawn from room to room, as if guided by a ghostly presence that he could neither see nor feel. He entered a sort of library. There was a heavy, musty smell in the room. He heard the sound of scuttling rats. Through the dim light, he could make out bookcases towering above him. Never before had he seen such tall bookcases. His eye followed the bookcases all the way to what seemed like an impossibly high ceiling. He heard from somewhere a clock striking nine. himself being drawn into the kitchen. There were those scuttling rats again. And then he saw it. On the table, sitting right there on the table, just inches away from him. Oh, it was too horrible to picture. Yet to picture it, we must. There, sitting right there on the table, on a flowery china plate, was a, a, a cupcake. And on top of that cupcake was a sickly-looking orange frosting. And on top of that, a, a, a jelly bean! And it was, could it be? Yes, the jelly bean was licorice! The sheer horror of the sight was enough to shock him back into consciousness. Now having fully regained his senses, one thought 
and one thought alone flashes mind like a strobing neon light. Escape. Will the swallow be bolted out of the room? Down the corridor, through yet more rooms. A another corridor? Doors bursting open as he flew like a rocket through the house. He arrived at the front entryway, but standing before him was the purring kitty. However, the kitty was no match for his frenzy, and he sped toward the front door. Oh, wait. The kitty was a match. The kitty ate him.